To know what out of the box is, you should know the box. What is the box? So the box itself is so big. There is the wholesome enjoyment of an art form that cannot be taught. It is not in a book. It's not in the scriptures. It's it's in experience. That way, I think everything is out of box. Everything is in the box. Like you you never know because the box is so big. No matter how much time we spend, we will still we would have covered very little. So in this little span of one lifetime, the best thing to do would be to be adventurous. Go for it, even if you fail. It's okay. <laughs> Vajra Shri Venugopal is a well-known Indian classical singer and flautist and man does this episode have so much in store for you. She was found to have the rare ability to identify about 40 ragas at the tender age of 1 and 1/2. That's crazy, right? About 15 months in, 18 months in, she was like able to recognize sounds and music to <laughs> what? And then about 200 ragas apparently at the age of 4 as if that doesn't blow your mind then i really don't know what else will <laughs> so in this episode we talk about how one can transcend their field and explore areas that you thought would not be possible otherwise by just keeping at it and keeping your mind well lubricated and well oiled uh, the importance of constantly learning new things and pushing yourself to try new things and then really also pushing yourself to the limits and how if you love something you need to love it wholly and wholeheartedly i think this is something we spoke about in our conversation with odushi but the idea is you need to take up any anything and everything that comes with the package so yeah when you do sign up to be a singer you need to take up pretty much everything and all the facets that come along with the job and the same thing applies to pretty much anything that you take up in your career so Yeah, how it's super important for you to accept it wholly. <laughs> We also talk about how Vadi considers her full-time gig to be a PJ specialist, a poor joke specialist, <laughs> and that she creates music on the side. <laughs> so that that's a, a fun bit in our conversation. So yeah, stay tuned for that part and uh, some fun laughs as well that uh, is in store for you. So yeah, stay tuned for that. Finally, before we get into the episode, I'd like to talk a little bit about. our audio partner senizer i still can't believe that these guys are our partner man shit oh man so so for instance the podcasting mics that we're using right now are by senizer the headphones i'm using for monitoring and for editing and uh, what our team uses for yeah pretty much the entire audio workflow is powered by senizer which is just incredible i'll talk a little bit more about our uh, partnership a little later in the episode And then finally Open Jam Studios that's where we're shooting and recording these episodes. So yeah this studio helps out with end to end creation and pretty much with all the equipments provided with the infrastructure as well. So yeah I'll talk a little bit more about that as well a little later in the episode. Guess that wraps up the intro. Let's get right into it. This is my conversation with Varija Shri Venugopal. This is Against the Odds and I'm your host Akash Damodar. The show is all about inspiring people to take the unconventional path and lead a life that is truly fulfilling and rewarding. Watch and listen as talented individuals take us through their learnings, the challenges they face and how they continuously adapt to overcome them. It's quite intriguing, dude, to understand what all you've been through, and I was like, "Whoa, this is a lot!" And the fact that, dude, you you literally started identifying music when you were what less than two years old. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, people are trying to figure out how to say things, and you're here like singing or like identifying things. I'm well, like, I was still figuring out how to say things, but <laughs> <laughs> this came more naturally. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wow, that's crazy, but. do that and and i did what you asked me to do to i just went through the website as well and i got an idea of mm. you know what you've been through and that's just crazy talk and and i'm glad that now you're what traveling to russia and 
a let's, lot of things on, yeah. you know, on the cards, right? Yeah, exactly. Let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers crossed for that. But uh, It's been 18 months since. Yeah, but yeah, I love traveling. I'm waiting to look at the airport first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Same. <laughs> oh, man. So, Sometimes I just feel like I should go drive to the airport, have a coffee and come back. Yeah, yeah. But if you think about it, right, that's like the... Bangalorean's way of <laughs> like a road trip. <laughs> That's true. It's always been like uh, when, yeah, a few years ago, like 10 years ago or something, just go drive to the airport, have coffee and come back. It That's used it. to be like a big outing. <laughs> <laughs> so weird though, we, we Bangalorean's eyes. I mean, like like she was also saying, right? Mm. They used to drive down to Matharli and now Matharli is well, uh, people, proper Bangalore yeah, also yeah, now, yeah. right? That's Which right. is crazy. It's not a Harley anymore. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> Oh man, but uh, cool. I think a good place to start mm -hmm. things off is um, how you spoke to me about um, how you like to constantly be learning new things, right? right. And, and exploring and experimenting and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Because I think with something like um, Carnatic music, mm -hmm. which is very conventional, very Indian, very Dravidian, it's very South Indian. Uh, it's got its, you know, very different roots compared to other types of music. But I personally, and also I've learned a little bit of music. That's I amazing. just I'll put that out there. I've, I've, yeah. I've completed my junior exam. Oh, so, fantastic. Yeah, <laughs> I was back in the day. But yeah. um, so uh, I know for the fact that it encapsulates a whole lot, right? And you it can does. literally cover anything to everything within, you know, all the ragas and whatnot, Correct. right? Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah, so the fact that you have now started experimenting and you know uh, seeing what other hybrid music or you know other forms of music and how you can implement everything you have learned and how you're exploring other facets of this mm -hmm. as well right mm -hmm. and now you're collaborating with a whole lot of people outside India too so I think it's very important for you know for you to actually do that so right. when did you actually discover that or maybe even think that, okay, maybe I should look at music forms outside. And you spoke about how you like jazz and, you you know, you've been looking at or listening to a lot of soul or jazz from, you right. know, like a lot of yes, years. Yes, very yeah. much. Yeah, so how did you get exposed to that and why did you decide to actually embark on that? Um, actually, well, to begin with, both my parents are uh, from a musical background. My father is a professional musician. He's a flautist. He's one of the most prominent gurus. My first guru... Um, my parents are my first gurus. Uh, H.S. Venugopal is my father and Rama Venugopal is my mother. So they are the um, reason why I um, started appreciating music. So um, that way they were pretty open. Um, they were conventional. They made sure I, I get the right kind of training. Um, it being Carnatic music, you know, which is one of the strongest and most intricate and beautifully curated, codified form of classical music and one of the most ancient yeah. forms of music. So they made sure I get the right foundation, the right scholastics and fundamentals and, and skill set and understanding of music. At the same time, my father has also been a person who's who's constantly putting himself in new platforms and he's played a lot for dance performances like Pete Bhartanatyam or Mohini Atam or even Yakshagana and many 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 such uh, forms so and uh, he has also been one such person who keeps in his own way um, experimenting with his musicality so that also led into him exposing me to different types of music right when I was very young uh, be taking me to concerts Carnatic concerts, Hindustani concerts, or even light music, or he even used to play some recordings of John McLaughlin and uh, you know Shakti. That was my first introduction to uh, um, jazz mm. and the fusion of Indian music with jazz, and uh, that's that's been falling on my ears for very long. But then as I started evolving, you know, personally, musically, I developed. Uh, parallelly, I developed interest in uh, deeper interest in many kinds of music. Yeah. Um, of course, Carnatic music has always helped me to appreciate anything else, to say the least. And I used to listen to music and then notate it, try to sing it. 
like there used to be these thermocol you know these thermocol big pieces of things yeah, that yeah. you used to get in stationary stores yeah, yeah. and if if i had extras of those thermocol sheets or cardboard sheets or anything in the house my job would be listen to these cassettes and then write notations in okay. in the sarigama padani format you know right. and uh, and that was like a fun game for me like and decoding <laughs> decoding and uh, it was really nice so it started there and then slowly it went into a uh, more of an exploration uh, explorative zone right. where i i started trying to sing some things that i found to be very new melodically and rhythmically compared to hey what is this this i've been singing learning carnatic music for so long but this sounds different so mm. what is that so what do i have to do if i have to approach this piece of music that's how it started and it's it's been a great learning process and every day it's I, it's I, still is it's, sure, it right? is it's going to be yeah 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 so that's that's how i got introduced to and then later of course meeting with a lot of people fantastic musicians uh, who helped me get a deeper insight yeah, yeah. no but i'm i'm just thinking uh, how how again i'm i'm thinking more from the perspective of how people think you might be a little um bit in a box or cage if you think you're only going to study carnatic music because you think that you can there's only so much you can do with it right of course in terms of um like you said maybe the scholastic side of things or maybe the technical side of things there's a lot you can explore mm-hmm. but in term, in terms of putting yourself out there mm-hmm. people generally think it's like you have you could either be um a sessionist you could mm-hmm. record sessions mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you could be maybe a playback singer which mm. might not necessarily only be carnatic but could be other forms which right. you have to explore and get into right and then also you have your kacheris and your performances right. and all of right. that but how can one and how did this happen with you that people from outside started approaching you and <laughs> because no one thinks that way right like right. especially like right. if if you're studying um you know you can study sanskrit let's mm-hmm. say or you can study indian history right but chances are that you will be stuck to working with other people locally mm-hmm. in that same realm mm-hmm. but then how did that open up and because a lot of people don't expect that right? internet <laughs> is it <laughs> internet uh but this exercise of mine and this effort this madness towards trying different things and constantly uh, that that excitement about any new material that's always been there but then when there's internet and um you know that you can put out even if you're trying something new and you, you can put yourself out there and i am not been very good at it for a long time but mm. i tried it a few years ago and i put a solo of uh, john coltrane's giant steps and me trying to sing it and a friend of mine a very very senior um uh, composer in, who lives in london named eugene skeef so he saw that i've been trying to explore with my voice um using the indian solfege so he was like why you should try this you should try listening to john coltrane and and said so give it a try so i l- listened to it like hundreds of times and i couldn't it all went <laughs> like that and i took my time and finally i was able to you know understand how it's moving and then practice how to sing it and that's the first video that really uh, one of the videos that really really grabbed the attention of many many people in the jazz circuit who who are who have been in the field for so long yeah. and they know what the piece is hmm. and they uh, expressed their uh, heartfelt appreciation so i was like i felt very encouraged and yeah. i've been continuing um, to to keep at it ever since so that's crazy so, but did you, i'm i'm sure you didn't get into that with that mindset at all right no it's it's always been uh, an exciting exercise for me again it's a new thing that i i i got to learn but then it resulted in so many unexpected um moments that it's it's hard to believe but victor wooten like a person like victor wooten uh, reacted and then we got in touch and then later I, he's like my god like one of the music gods and then he asked me to sing on his album alongside 
legends like Dennis Chambers on the drums and Bob Franceschini and that's uh, it's very humbling because I come from a very humble small background and uh, it means a lot <laughs> you know and getting to meet Bobby McFerrin later that happened through Victor Wooten too so I saw that photo yeah it's yeah it, these things like uh, it's bigger than any award any anything it's it's like um, a reassurance um, for me to 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 believe that you know you should just keep doing what you're doing don't don't neglect your passion just if your heart says so just go for it and keep doing yeah. without expecting anything you know that's the thing because your only expectation should be a good journey yeah. you've already achieved the happiness that you want to achieve through the process Correct. it's not like you arrive at a destination and then you are like okay now i am successful it's not that it's so that's been the most uh, fulfilling thing for me through through throughout dude that was like the next thing i was going to go to <laughs> where you know there's this whole and this has come up time and again on the show where mm-hmm. we have spoken about uh, goals versus journey mm-hmm. right like even milestones also how you measure milestones because what you just said now mm-hmm. is is probably the right way to pick it or my you know like like gauge your uh, your journey itself in the right. sense you don't know you don't get into it knowing these are going to be the milestones Correct. but you get into it to enjoy the journey and That's the right. process and and along the way you get you know to interact with well like you said gods mm. or people that you would have maybe looked up to at certain point Correct. and then people you never expected you know to you know bump your well your path right Correct. which is just crazy absolutely and then i think that like you said that the word you use reassurance makes a lot of sense because mm. what what else can you like uh, an award and all of that is extremely like i feel a little more materialistic and it's a little more commercial in the sense which obviously has its place of course that is place. still a public uh, it, it's a it's an appreciation and an encouragement that that comes from the entire public or the right. entire society in the form of an award which is equally very sweet and reassuring but then there are these personal moments Correct. that is not uh, it's it you, you there there is no name to it but it's just a very personal experience and each one of us uh, will feel it in a different way right. and we value it in a different way based on what our priorities are right so well yeah <laughs> yeah so true and and i think there is definitely um, something to constantly exploring and doing something new always right because mm-hmm. I think especially when it comes to creators or anyone in the field of any art mm. right for that matter I've noticed and again I I say this because I know a lot of our audience and even if they're not exactly in you know following this bucket I know just because of how many you know the sheer number of people in India and the kind of conventional you know uh, careers that they might have mm. no one thinks you know outside the box right so for right. instance if you get like you had this you mentioned that you wanted to get you know do science and then you mm-hmm. wanted to you know pursue that path mm-hmm. right a lot of people do that and and that is basically right. like the you know the way to go right right but and then it becomes like a technical thing and you know you're in it and you're only working on maybe 3 4 bits mm-hmm. that you know you're constantly doing over and over again through mm-hmm. the literally the course of your life mm-hmm. either from a managerial perspective or from a technical perspective and all of that but i think where creators and people who are in the creative field mm. tend to explore a lot of other areas which otherwise you know they wouldn't even think about exploring mm-hmm. right and i think this whole looking for newer uh, areas to explore mm-hmm. and just just because you're curious and just because you want it's something that you personally want to fulfill not for right. you know just for the career sake or whatever right? Right, right i think that kind of automatically keeps you well oiled and well you know like there's absolutely, so much absolutely absolutely right? yeah. that, that's that's very right because there are that's also one thing that i always keep in mind not everything that you practice is what you would perform on stage right. there are some things that you practice or you you try which will help you in some way you know like you just said out of the box but then then to know what out of the box is you should know the box <laughs> what is the box so the box itself is so big and right. being from india we have such a deep cultural background and be it classical arts music dance anything 
it's it is so rich and just to get to the surface level of it itself is it takes a lot of time it takes an entire life time and then still you would have barely scratched the surface so the best part about the best part that i am enjoying in this entire journey is uh, realizing the value of the rich culture that we already have in our country mm. the uh, with respect to arts and if you if you delve into it enough and gather enough information to enable you to appreciate anything from anywhere so that something that is beyond syllabus it goes to the level of enjoyment of arts not just performance or presenting a particular set of things that you have learned it's it's not just that it's that might be one thing you know right but then there is the wholesome enjoyment of an art form that cannot be taught it has to be we have to learn it ourselves it is not in a book it's yeah. not in the scriptures it's a, it's in experience correct so that way i think everything is out of box everything is in the box like you you never know because the box is so big like i felt well, it's just that we are we are so small inside this entire big area that uh, no matter how much time we spend we will still we would have covered very little yeah so in that in this little span of one lifetime the best thing to do would be to be adventurous go for it even if you fail it's okay like i i thought i want to study science two years i i might say i wasted two years but no it's an experience i made friends and i understood how difficult science is so my respect for people who <laughs> pursue science you know increased so that's that's there so everything is an experience and uh, that way it's 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 all beautiful it's every experience is only a positive thing it's only gain it's there is never any loss of anything there's only yeah. gain of experience right yeah well put uh, i i i wanted to literally delve a little more into why is it that you when you were a kid itself you started writing all of these things down i mean did was that taught to you or is that something you just picked up and have you always been the kind of person who writes a lot of things down or uh, because that not just with exploring like the way you were doing with pretty much anything you do i think uh, a lot of people talk about how you you need to bring your thoughts into the world right mm-hmm. and the first, and the best way to do that is to literally write it down the moment you pen it down your thoughts have taken some form and then after that it, it's so much easier for you to act on it or do whatever it takes right? right so in this case as well is that i mean how did you get around to doing this and and you said this is something you time and again still do i right? still do yeah so basically writing is like on a generic level also writing does give a lot of clarity i mean not just for writers or for anybody in specific but anybody yeah, yeah. so um i was watching my father um and his lessons right when i was very young so that also influenced me and i'm constantly listening to um listening to that music and then when i was about 18 months like my father realized that i'm able to recognize a few ragas just by listening to the phrases or a composition or something like that and then what he did was he would sing the composition and he would also sing the notation the, the swaras associated with that so that it would help me to understand the relationship between the the melody and the lyric and mm. how the melody is moving and why the raga is called what it is called and what swaras are there so he would not theoretically tell me but he would do that practically Correct. so that helped me and then once i um, was enrolled to uh, uh, um, take classes under the guidance of vidushi h geeta so then she would write notation and i got familiar with it and then once i started going to school i i learned how to write and i started learning how to write notation myself there are only seven sari ga ma padani yeah, so yeah. seven letters yeah. it's not difficult yeah, yeah. to write <laughs> but that was a great exercise i feel even now because i realized that whenever i um my method of learning is i listen to it 
so many times that i get very familiar with the melody and uh, then i i try practicing singing it not with notation but i just sing along with it once it's in my memory i try singing it and i sing it so many times until it i develop a muscle memory of the melody and then later i make notes and when i make notes it helps on a visual level like on a photographic memory level so it makes things very easier for me like personally for me it's worked that way so writing is so very cool. important for me yeah, and, and uh, not just the fact that it helps with recall it also is uh, such an easy way to get something off your head right so That's right. so in this case as well i like like you didn't no one had to tell you this in the sense you kind of picked it up from like watching other people and then when you start doing it is when you realize there's some you know some absolutely to it. Yeah. i'm sure even you would have been told this in school like instead of reading the notes write the notes because yeah you will tend to remember it in a better way so Correct. that works everywhere i guess so true and then yeah. later it's you don't even have to put any extra effort to memorize it it would all already be Yeah. imprinted on a deeper level so it's easy to recall <laughs> yeah yeah no but do and i'm just thinking man how did i mean you obviously had a lot of influence in your family in the sense for music mm. you had a lot of people who were already well at very deep in mm. the in the art form right mm. so it is very e- easy for you to kind of get little influence and you know like get into the space mm. and and but it's something that kind of stood out in our conversation yesterday was mm. how you said everyone needs to find something that they uniquely good at uh-huh. and then really pursue it mm-hmm. like there's nothing else you mm-hmm. know that i mean even if you don't um i mean other things can happen but mm-hmm. your this should never stop and you should keep at it right that's right uh how, first i know how you found this but mm-hmm. i'm thinking how do people even know this because you know how did you know that music was although you had influence how did you know this was it for you because it's it's very easy for us to think like you said like it's good to dabble your toes it's good mm. to like understand whether this is for me or not and i think experimenting goes a long way that's and right. that's how you kind of you know yeah. discover yourself and what you want to do passion all of that bit mm-hmm. but then how do how do you really tell and when did you when were you personally able to tell Well, I just couldn't stop singing. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> I would sing even when I was in school. I would keep singing in the class and uh, all of that. And but I've been lucky to uh, realize sooner that right. I want really to be, soon, dude. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that I this is what I want to be doing. Yeah. Uh, um, I want to be singing, uh, making music. Um, but it I I gain more clarity mm-hmm. as I. got older mm-hmm. you know about how to have my own um voice you know but then each of us um, have a different time frame timeline and we take different amount of times to realize where our passion lies sometimes the passion that we have might might not support our life or uh, earning right sometimes it does so it's it's a tricky thing sometimes it works out because that's that's exactly why i i feel some people are in uh, a certain profession which might not be their favorite things to do but they might be good at it but their passion might be something else so there are also people who are extremely good at what they're doing and uh, um what they're doing will be supporting them in such a way that they are also able to pursue their passion so there's that and then there is also like for me my passion is my profession which is which is good in a way but also challenging in a good way yeah yeah you know so that way it's uh, i am very lucky that i figured it out mm, yeah. and i'm music has been my support system to be honest with you yeah. so um yeah it's not it, there's no easy or right answer to this whole thing right that's it is the, very relative extremely very subjective right yeah, and yeah. and i think today's uh teens or even gen zs for that matter are just looking at um you know having to quickly figure out what it is mm. right and and the uh, also you have these certain outliers who already have 
so much clarity on what they want to do maybe mm. an outlier like you because you already knew that you had to do something <laughs> in music but, but you know, well there you go again coming back to the box like the box is so big music is so big <laughs> right so what in music okay carnatic music carnatic music itself is a notion what about that okay i want to apply carnatic music somewhere but how do i do that so what do i have to do in, to be able to tr- um use my language in in a global format so for that how much do i have to equip myself how much of listening what kind of you know again it's it's a it's a big ocean we yeah. take it's like a flow chart that keeps on going and after this you need to do this you never arrive at a final spot but you just know that okay this is the direction that's it right yeah and, and but that that itself is a big big win right is a big plus point it is it's 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 important yeah, yeah it is and like there are a lot of people who like you said uh, are stuck in a situation where they have um passions in that tertiary lines if that makes sense mm. like in the sense not what they it's not their livelihood it's not mm. something it's not their main occupation mm. maybe some people who want to make it their occupation but are unable mm. to figure out how to get there Correct. or maybe some of them who think like oh i'm already in my 40 so we're way past that mark and it's done mm. but mm. like you said every single person has their own mm. timeline or time frames so That's it right. all comes back to that right and it's not necessary that your passion has to be your yeah. profession yeah and that doesn't mean to say that you are not passionate about your profession which is not actually your yeah. other passion or whatever it is yeah some people are happy um just playing the guitar and singing for their own happiness that doesn't mean to say oh you can't say you play or sing so well why why don't you be a full time musician you can't ask that to anybody because it's it's a very personal thing that guy might be happy being an accountant and playing the guitar and singing on the weekends whenever he just wants some time for himself that's also that's okay correct yeah right so yeah again there's no right or wrong answer <laughs> to this whole thing that's the beauty of it right mm. oh man but it it's that we had another guest on the show who said the same thing where uh, he said the world will be um, and i think i made another youtube video around this where mm. we spoke about the importance of hobbies and the importance mm. of passion mm. and how um, he said this guest of mine said um, if everyone in this world was able to somehow contribute in this unique field that they're passionate about mm. or somewhere they have a unique skill set mm. then the world would be a much better place if you think yeah. about it right everyone's doing what they want to do and they're kind of fitting in yeah. like if you let your engineers be engineers you let your doctors be doctors mm. and then you let your creators be creators and all of that it's like a nice you know That's like right. a nice like you saying if you if you let them choose what they want to be is what you're saying which, which is very which is true Correct. and it all i feel it all bottoms down to giving you 100% in whatever you do there is no 100% actually giving it your all. it's like yeah it's it cannot your efficiency can never be 100% but what i'm saying is if you put your heart into whatever you're doing i think anything will turn out to be good it should not be um it, it should not be a a labor which is just for the sake of uh, something yeah even if it's even if it's a simple even if you want to fold this tissue or you you want to throw this in the garbage but you should, the intention should be right yeah. and then you you just end up doing it yeah over properly. and over again yeah. it becomes a habit of sorts yeah right? that's it yeah. so yeah. simple things like that so i think it applies for everything <laughs> so true so true <laughs> oh man uh, so another thing with with this whole passion thing and since we're talking about occupation and jobs and mm. all that uh, you spoke to me about how you every single day is like a challenge or not, not just mm. challenge is new is no because you don't even know what you can expect that's right, so right. there's so many ways to deconstruct that the way i see it because <laughs> you know first of all it's it's great because you're you're waking up um not knowing one and two there's like a different you know like zeal or enthusiasm to mm. you know to you that you bring to the table and then also at the broader level um people who don't know where the next pay check comes from or mm-hmm. where how mm-hmm. uh, not just pay from where they're going to be literally the next month that's right is you know is also something that i think is you know it's good to get comfortable with you mm-hmm. know once you're comfortable with that it kind of becomes very easy for you to handle any challenge thrown at you that's right and and so you told me that you're very you're really comfortable right now the fact that you don't know what is in store for you the next day or maybe even that day and you actually like that you thrive that right well it's like um 
if you you choose this path then you you have to take everything that is associated with it you just can't take the musical part you have to take the life part that comes with it yeah as a profession and that's that's the only way and there is no other go other than getting comfortable with it and accepting it because that's the you you sit on a jolly ride and you you don't think about oh my god it's so high and i'm going to that's that's the thing you are sitting up there because you want to experience it well i'm not uh, comparing <laughs> this to a jolly ride but i'm it's just an example so right. you choose it when you choose it you take everything that comes with with grace be it uh, be it a good thing or or a slight if, if it's a bumpy ride it's all part of it i think every profession has uh, its own quirks and um well when it comes to freelance uh, freelancing artists things work in a different way and the dynamics will be different um but then again that's the price you have to pay in in order to have an artistic experience a creative experience yeah oh my god yeah because do the the main reason a lot of people don't quit their job mm. is for the same reason here because well they they're so comfortable with you know getting their paycheck mm. on time mm. which obviously i mean i'm not saying that this is the only way to we should get in dive deep and just you know mm. experience it mm. all but there is something to you know like you said once you accept the whole thing right mm. we had a guest right here i think a couple of days ago where she spoke about she is an actor so she spoke mm. about um how you can't just take the you know the the happy bits of it and the exciting bits of it where oh i'm i'm on i'm you know i'm on the big screen or you know i'm yeah, yeah, be- yeah. behind i mean i'm in front of the camera which is great but what about filing your taxes what yeah. about audition yeah. what about everything else that goes behind you know you mm-hmm. having to make it mm-hmm. right though that's also so important it is important and for uh, people like me like i'm a freelancing artist so um finance work in a different way like i have to plan my finances in a different way uh, be it savings or since it's not like a monthly paycheck kind of a thing and uh, everything depends it's it's very very dynamic it's never constant so so my planning uh, of life will also have to be tweaked to suit um, the entire situation for example covid who knew uh, right many artists were hit like um it's it's been bad yeah but then there are things you will have to do to figure out to be able to sail through and there are good days there are bad days so the most important thing will be to protect your core to keep your spirits high and not lose your spark and be uh, you know sail through and yeah. just hang in there so that way yeah it's uh, there are so many things to being an artist not not just what you see on instagram or on social media but there are a lot many more <laughs> things okay guys taking a small break from the conversation to talk about our collaborations and partnerships so first and foremost i'd like to talk about our collaboration with hub hopper so for people who don't know what hub hopper is It's a podcast providing platform, a hosting provider platform where if you don't know where to host your show or if you're unsure of where to get started with creating audio podcasts, then Hub Hopper Studio is the way to go. If you wish to start your own podcast for free, then you can visit hubhopperstudio.com. Hub Hopper is one of India's leading podcast creation platform. Start your podcast with Hub Hopper Studio and get your voice heard across platforms like Spotify, Gana, Google Podcasts, Wink Music and more. Click on the link in the episode description or visit hubhopperstudio.com. The audio at Against the Odds is brought to you by Sennheiser. Yep, that's our audio partner. So I'm sure you already know what Sennheiser does, but for people who don't know, you've been either living under a rock or maybe you don't know what these incredible pieces of equipment can really do so from some of the best industry standard and leading microphones to some incredible headphones to well you know any kind of audio equipment Sennheiser's got your back 
I'll leave a link to pretty much all their products and a catalog in the description below for you guys to go check it out. But uh, yeah, if you like what you're hearing here, it's all because of these microphones. So yeah, you want to go check out the MK4s and the MK8s by Sennheiser. And uh, yeah, truly level your game up when it comes to audio and take it to the next level. Also, this episode is recorded and shot at our community partner, location partner, Open Jam Studios. So I'm coming to you from Open Jam Studios based out of Church Street in Bangalore. So for people who don't know where to get started with creating content or if in case you don't have the equipment to create content or maybe you just need a nice professional workspace or studio to get started, then might I recommend Open Jam Studios. I think the process of finding this place itself was a big, big boon for us. The fact that we took a break during that second wave got us to really rethink our um, previous studio and um, it opened up a whole bunch of array of options uh, when it comes to uh, studios and well open jam turned out to be the best pick out of the lot so if you'd like to record your show come on down here they've got all the equipment uh, on board and you just have to come on us pay for the space and get going it's as simple as that so I'll leave a link to Open Jam Studios' uh, website in the description below for anyone who wants to check it out. Cheers. And dude, we spoke about this yesterday, right? Uh, uh, like all these things come in ebb and flows. Yeah. Uh, you can you can discover the best thing to do or like in a well suited job, whatever. Or even mm-hmm. if you're doing this on the side. Chances are that, you know, like when shit hits the roof, well, it does. And at that yeah. point, you have to really just cope with it, right? And that's yeah, part and parcel to. of it. It is, it is, absolutely. <laughs> and that that's life, right? What's, what's life if everything is rosy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. I mean, so I, I, I've been thinking about this. I mean, I used to think about this a lot. Then I was like, yeah, it's, it's a waste me having to spend time thinking about something else, which is... If, if if everything was great and everything worked out fine, then you would never have a, a sense of feeling of elated. So like, you know, or even you'd be gratitude. Happy. Yeah, gratitude, any of that, right? Because everything's the same. <laughs> There's nothing yeah. to it, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. obviously everything has to be in ebb and flows. That's right. That's right. <laughs> like like they say, if there's no darkness, you will not know what light is. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I think right. we're getting into the deep things now. But we are, yeah, we're going a little. In a let's get back to. Okay, let's start the conversation now. <laughs> yeah, I know. What are we talking about till now? I mean, till now it's been a little awkward. <laughs> We've been like just saying some random things. People are like, yeah, "Where yeah. is this going?" Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, but no, but dude, this is. I think these are things that people, you know, generally um, think about when they are alone. Or, you know, when they think about when they hit rock bottom. Yeah, but the funny part is that we all know about the, these things and, and the greatest uh, philosophical thoughts and, uh, and and teachings and everything. But it's it's not easy to apply them, like, because we are all human. And to get to that point, you need to have such a calm temperament to, to just take everything that comes in, in equal spirit. So... I think that's that plays a very great role, uh, especially for creators, mm-hmm. because that equilibrium becomes important, and you need that equilibrium to be able to do justice to your creative side. You can't just because you're in a bad mood, you can't let that affect so true. Uh, your performance. You know, I mean, who's gonna ask you what happened at home or who what happened on the way? If, if you had an accident or a traffic jam or you got into a fight or doesn't matter you when it comes to your art you have to do justice so that requires a very very composed temperament so yeah, yeah. that's that's something that I think is very important to practice oh my god yeah so true man I mean like yeah. everyone has problems right everyone's right. going through stuff yeah, yeah. but take some grit and it takes some real yeah. dedication to actually do that it does man I'm, I'm, and when I think about it I, I've read about numerous instances where you know either these guys on set 
like actors hmm. you know uh, might have hurt themselves while they're doing a scene yeah. and they continue through it they do it yeah and that's that's some crazy dedication, dedication. i mean dedication yeah yeah it is right i mean that's where you and like so th- th- again this is also a weird tricky balance to play there are people who like literally immerse themselves in the role for like you know like for months together that's right to get, to kind of you know take in that persona yeah. and all of that <laughs> well okay great <laughs> but at the same time there's also the other side like what we just discussed and yeah. all of it i think it comes down and we see like you know different people having i mean bringing different flares to the screen and and right. it really comes comes down yeah right that. from the guy who who's taking care of the lights the spot wide everybody is playing their role correct equal intensity correct right? and even if one element is missing you don't get the desired output <laughs> correct so, so true yeah uh, so i was watching this video today um, about why why is it do ceos have to always be assholes or something like that like okay. do they have to be like you know <laughs> like rude is that the okay. only way that you know that companies can survive because that's like a very that's the kind of you know message that we've been sent right and and you know if you think mm. about like I'll, that's how people are portraying certain leaders and right, all of that right there was never there's no conclusion to the video it was just like an open an discussion an open ended yeah, yeah exactly but one thing that stood out in that uh, d- uh, that video was uh, i think the video was by johnny harris and he was talking about how um like everyone uh, looks up to the ceo and looks up to a leader and i get it that the person is driving and all of all of it but that's some guys who take it so personally like when they're the ceos right like literally that's my brand and i'm doing all mm. of this but it's not just you like you said there's so many people and components to this whole thing very true yeah and and if some people like some people want to be the smaller you know bit uh, like they like those roles right. right but then that's not what is you know like highlighted uh, exactly right but then it's there yeah it's there correct Uh, and and if you look at like how you know certain movies or certain films or you know just the just media itself showcases mm. all of these things mm. it's like all these tertiary mm-hmm. you know it's not it's like top soil kind so mm-hmm. you can just like you know it's okay but that's not the truth dude yeah, right. and i know people who have gotten into uh let's say videography and then moved on to cinematography and then mm. moved on to lighting and then they become a light expert and that's it mm. like it's the other path you know right, like a different right, way but right. i think there's yeah i i would say it's like in retrospection it's okay why why can't we look at it like this person wants to specialize in that craft nothing is higher or lower right if yeah. you you just want to specialize in something yeah like um even in school there might be a person who 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 just is happy driving the van or the school bus for kids he yeah. might be capable of more but if that's what is giving him hap- happiness and he is able to lead his life that's also all yeah. right it's not it's necessary yeah. yeah it's not necessary to for everybody to um, have an ambition to to become the highest uh, whatever person in the world correct they should just be the best version of themselves in whatever they're doing correct yeah that's it do that's so true and and i can speak for myself where my ambition or my aim uh, in life early on especially when you know you're in high school or you mm. know you're getting into college was to obviously get an mba mm. was to obviously become a ceo was okay. to obviously you know run a massive huge mnc uh. and you know why because well that's what's showcased to us and and, that, and mm. obviously there's people know that there's hard work behind and all of that but people still either strive you know wanting that because that's what's on that's the mantle piece right it's it's just that i think it's also the um the, the care and concern associated with the future of the kids like in each family all the once the kid is born the first thing that they think about is 20 years ahead what is he or she going to do how is she going to survive how is he going to survive so it's about survival ultimately but what happens is sometimes um while we want to take the path that is the most taken path we might miss out on a on a few things that um, you know like some special capabilities that um, we might have one might have correct um, that's that's where uh, we have to wisely look out if if we have capabilities that can help us sustain right 
Right. It's it's not necessary to just go with the flock and do what they're doing. What if you are bad at it? Yeah. Right. Dude, the numbers are that people are either they don't fit in or they're bad at it because mm-hmm. that, like sheer numbers, right? It's just how you know, like I said, people are so conformed to doing this, mm-hmm. and it's after I got into like. uh like i told just with the same ambition right i started doing a lot of not just research i started getting into you know like running a business and all of that mm. first hand and then i realized man i i don't want to lead a life where mm. i have to spend 14 to 16 hours of my day just like toiling away and like you know having to worry about whether the company stocks are doing okay mm. whether you know the other founders or the cxos are you know like on top of things mm. or whatever right because that's not the life i want i would rather work only for 5 hours a day mm-hmm. and then get my time to like spend with my family mm-hmm. relax unwind mm-hmm. go on vacation when i can when i want to mm-hmm. when i need to maybe when i've reached the right. point where it's like oh my god because there there were instances when i was at my corporate job where i couldn't do all of that mm-hmm. because well your leaves are not in your hands although it's your leaves right, right which right. is so weird and and now i've gotten to the point where i'm like if i can get a sustainable business mm. where, which is growing mm. at the same time if i just two three of us like if i can literally with the podcast we have a lot of sponsors and a lot of things coming our mm. way but and if that really picks up the idea is not to get like 20 more people and you know get them behind the scenes and start running everything mm. and then etch other no mm. i don't want that mm. because that's that clarity at least i've gotten now mm-hmm. it, which makes sense to me because that's the kind of life i'd want to live right yeah yeah i mean things like that these these are the things that we 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 will need to figure out you know eventually and as long as you're i mean see as long as you're happy doing it and you are putting in your honest efforts and not forcibly doing something correct and then if you are sure that it will support you to to sustain and you know on a basic level these these are the things that you will one will need to know for sure um yeah again like you uh, this is so cool that you you figured it out like you want to do this you know the podcast and all that so uh, i'm sure there are many people out there like that who who are uh, capable of um, many things apart from what most of them are doing or, and total respect to uh, what people are doing otherwise in the technical field or anything they're doing that because they're good at it correct I have so many friends. I have all my cousins are engineers. So my entire family, on my mother's side and on my father's side. It makes sense why you were inclined a little bit to science. <laughs> makes sense. <laughs> no, I I also had a lot of friends who who wanted to study science and probably I also wanted to be with them, and I also wanted to see what it's like to to study science. It's it's a mixture of many things. But then, I totally respect their choices. Like be it my cousins or. or my friends and they are doing the best th- that they can in their field yeah so it's 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 relative like we said it's yeah <laughs> but it's it's quite challenging in a beautiful do you way. want to start the show vadi because we've been just like <laughs> talking about this no no i think we we <laughs> we is... might just go on and then end somewhere <laughs> exactly <laughs> Without somewhere without beginning <laughs> somewhere yeah no no dude but this is nice <laughs> yeah exactly I, i mean these are things that i if 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 I were to ask myself ten years ago, I'd be like, "Dude, you you are a fool. Like, you're, what you're talking about makes no sense mm-hmm. because everything has to be larger in life. Everything mm-hmm. has to be like you know, like again, how things are just portrayed. And we, I think today media plays a very very important. It's always played an important role in everything. Right now, with media and social media and all of that, mm-hmm. it's just the the well things have just become a lot broader, mm-hmm. right? And like for instance i know not ever since we started right uh, not since we started i'd say after we started picking up some you know like getting some traction people have been pinging me dming me on instagram for numerous things with podcasts numerous things mm-hmm. e- but everyone a lot of these guys i after talking to them is when i've realized dude i don't think you'd like podcasting mm. because either they don't have the knack for it in the mm-hmm. sense like not technically but mm-hmm. just like they don't they won't, they're not the kind of guy person who can hold a conversation for a long time mm-hmm. or they're not the one who would enjoy conversing mm-hmm. but what is shown i mean what showcased it's basically joe rogan and these guys who are like killing it right these top mm-hmm. podcasters mm-hmm. so if you look at the you know the kind of 
lives they're leading mm-hmm. or maybe uh, someone ca- you know finds out then the amount they're earning through each episode and they're like wow are you serious then mm-hmm. we should become a podcaster <laughs> but then th- it's when you get into it is when you're there so i spoke to another person i told i told him uh maybe you, and I, i said no offense but i think you might be a better producer than you would be a podcaster because he was thinking more from the you know the 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 back end bit how uh-huh. do we get things to go right. and he said i'm not too comfortable being on camera i said great don't don't do a video podcast right. uh i don't really know if i'd want to speak for so long mm-hmm. said okay so maybe do a short form podcast mm-hmm. and by yourself don't even get anyone no uh yeah but you know mm-hmm. some like see your 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 that self like kind of answering your own question yeah yeah you know and then finally i was like but you like all of these things maybe you should be a producer but if you think about it where, where do you when you're a kid where do you get like a, a handbook that says this is how you can become a producer i mean those are these are all like nuanced right it's what you have time you know yeah. and uh, and another important thing is to be honest with yourself and uh, not believe that you are supposed to be doing this because they so think you reasons. should be doing this yeah flashy reasons or whatever yeah. right so you you be honest with yourself right you know that you are good at this or you are really happy doing this then you you have it all you have the answers like you said one will have any answer uh, answer to any any kind of doubts yeah mm-hmm. yeah and i think you the uh, uh, one simple way to do this is by getting your hands dirty and you spoke about how practical uh, your experience has been with mm-hmm. all of this right you mm-hmm. spoke about how um your education bit was just like almost namesake in the sense you already were full time you know like a musician almost i've been mostly on the practical side yeah. of <laughs> you know the and performance and then you said the ac- ac- academia bit you just you decided to explore a little bit but you realized that a lot of these things i know a lot of these things i can explore a little further but for most bit it's been getting your hands dirty right that's right that's that's been i have realized that i'm um, probably not a person who would delve deep into academics and uh, become like a lecturer or something like that that's uh, i don't think that's my uh, that's something that i would like to do full time i mm. would be very happy to be part of master classes share ideas again on a very practical level but this i realized uh, you know and that's what made me focus more on what i really want to do i i just want to sing mm. i i want to keep trying new things i want to sing and uh, also coming from a background that's uh, as conservative or um in a good way like very rich and very traditional format of music that is carnatic uh, so being um able to stick to the roots uh while exploring so that becomes the challenge because you know how um um how the expectations will be when when you call yourself as a certain you know artist from a certain field then you are expected to do a certain few things so so that definition of an artist is what um will will keep you on your toes you know okay i have to do justice to this i'm i'm saying i'm going to be singing this carnatic raga so i have to sing it in the way it has to be sung even yeah. if i want to explore improvise i'm i'm i love improvising improvising is my favorite thing to do apart from singing structured compositions at the same time i love improvising so at the same time i have to be very respectful of the form of music and if i want to be adventurous i should make sure that this is taken care of and so that uh, that is where i i guess the clarity part comes in where you know that okay this is where you're coming out of but then mm-hmm. there is also this that you do not have to neglect right yeah yeah oh my god that this whole practical thing is again it these are all like cliche things right it's mm-hmm. such a an obvious thing right mm-hmm. like you said these are things we know mm-hmm. like philosophy also for the most part when you break it down to its you know granular level you're mm-hmm. like that we know we know yeah. but can you do it <laughs> I don't think it's so easy. <laughs> yeah, so true, man. Oh, man. But 
Dude, this is being great. I think we've spoken about a lot of heavy things. Let's talk a few light things, dude. Let's You're like it. a lover of PJs, I found out. <laughs> I, I like to know oh where, God. what. We have some PJs for us or something. Uh, no, no, no. I don't come prepared with PJs. Come on. <laughs> They just happen. <laughs> is it? Yeah. Can you think my, of like my, a PJ right now? No, no, no. It's just put, don't put me in a spot. <laughs> my dad's a very... Uh, you know a very cheerful guy he has his sense of humor is so sharp yeah. so i i get it from there and his word puns and things like that it's right. amazing so <laughs> yeah that's that's probably uh, you know i'm basically a full time pj artist and part time <laughs> musician i can say <laughs> that's a good way to put yeah. it yeah <laughs> <laughs> i sing now and then <laughs> i play music when i'm <laughs> when you're taking a break from <laughs> jokes <laughs> Oh man, but that's crazy, dude. Uh, dude, I I wanted to touch upon a lot of things, and I like how we have just gone through, you know, pretty much everything, and and it's it's great. in a different order, is it? Yeah, I yeah. mean, it, there's no there's no order. <laughs> it's just I I just uh, when I spoke to you yesterday, is and and this happens with pretty much all our guests, and mm-hmm. that's what I've you know been trying to do more and more, which is to. identify the right type of guests mm. and you spend more time understanding you know mm-hmm. really figuring out where they have come from and mm-hmm. what uh, their experiences have been mm-hmm. and you know what their um, what's close to their hearts right and those are things that i've realized at least there'll be one or two things that's like common to everyone right right and and that when i say common to everyone not like everyone on earth i'm mm-hmm. saying everyone who we are trying to shortlist at least mm-hmm. is is at least on those you know on those lines lines right and and that, i realized that literally like five minutes to, into our conversation yesterday <laughs> i was like uh, this whole thinking of thinking um of doing things practically writing things down, all the things that we you know a lot of people do and there's yeah. a reason for it right mm-hmm. and and it's tested time and again like people go to it because there's so much value in doing that correct yeah oh my god and i think one i think one last thing we can talk about which yes. uh which we didn't really talk about yesterday but i i'd like to get into now yes, is please. so the you as a content creator huh. as an artist mm. who is a, also a content creator because well people have found you through the internet like you said that's right So what has your journey been on that and do you really have a plan per se on how you create for specifically for that and of course you're creating on a daily basis because you love uh, riffing and you love you know like singing like you said you know right. improvising and all of that but what about this bit i have do you get, do you really have a plan uh, an artist do they normally have a plan like this now especially in so today's day and age for somebody like me uh, this is all quite new and of course i've been putting out content and i've been uh publishing some things that i've been singing and also been working on some original content and all that but there is no plan as such i've been going with the flow and uh, um my whole idea is to keep exploring new forays of music and then try blend it in with where i come from with with my indian music roots and i find that that sound is something that gives me a lot of joy and i've also realized that people who are listening to it are also finding it um very interesting and and refreshing uh recently i i've been listening to a lot of brazilian and brazilian jazz nowadays so i'm i'm learning a few compositions trying to sing it in my own way and um recently i put up something with with, with the couple of my colleagues and was very well received and some people from brazil contacted me asked them some really really great artists and i had the honor of featuring on their album and all of that but again like i said that's that is something that happens during the journey but what i enjoy doing is trying this out you know no matter if if it's going to be liked by people or not if i feel hey this sounds good i just want to put it out there it might turn out to be something good it, it might bring happiness to people more than anything it's a nice feeling for me to just sing and if it makes somebody happy then that itself is enough yeah so that's my plan <laughs> that's it and i um, a bigger um idea is is to try everything that's possible um through through the indian classical training that i've had so i want to explore as much as possible and 
and try blending into many many uh, genres of music yeah yeah, yeah. No, i think because the possibilities are endless right yeah yeah my god and uh, i i saw this post recently where it said create uh, create for an audience of one which is yourself Correct. right so so when you're putting something out there you don't think too much about how it's going to be received and all of that if you can think of i mean and obviously don't put out negative nonsense i'm That's talking right. like something that that you know okay is a good chance of you know like people perceiving it mm-hmm. positively and well great but if you're creating it for yourself and it fulfills you then you'll keep at it over and over that again so you right. don't need a proper plan per se and the intention is not to please anyone correct and it's impossible to please everyone, everyone. and that's not the right intention to have you are not doing anything to please anyone you're putting out your opinion out there it's just an opinion it's a thought and everybody is welcome to like it or not like it because it's a very personal thing but if it's making you happy putting out a piece of music or whatever then just go for it but just be very sincere that's all just do justice the maximum justice that you can do to that piece you do it and and that's it and yeah. then you are one step ahead towards you know growing yeah. as an artist yeah mm. so true i mean dude i'm i'm looking forward to the time where you combine pjs and kannada music that's going to ah! be like the next <laughs> that's going to be like the next that's level that's a very dangerous <laughs> combination <laughs> you asked dad i mean he's probably doing he's been really thinking about those ways like there's so many balls in the air how do i like put these together so maybe you guys should like put, you know put your heads together and do that yeah, but yeah, uh, yeah. dude this is this has been great uh, wari i'm i'm Same so glad here, that you finally here and this is awesome um great. two things i ask of all our guests and i think i'll ask you too uh-huh. one is um any closing thoughts any last message for our audience viewers listeners anything well um it's very rare that i get to have a conversation like this where we just talk about life you know it's usually it's it's about uh music technicalities of music how to practice what to sing or anything but there is uh, nowadays i've just been lately uh, recently i've been feeling like hey it's not not just that but it's it's more about how you are as a person itself you know and not the other way around if whatever you are as a person like reflects in whatever you do be it art or uh, engineering or whatever so so i am more into that nowadays like approaching life in the best way and staying positive optimistic intense and being at a high intensity level in whatever i do because you never know like just enjoy the present and and give it your best shot is my motto for now i am just sharing with everybody that's watching uh, everybody has their own mantra but that's that's mine <laughs> and i think it's a good mantra to <laughs> with as well my god thank you so much vari and where can we send people online uh, your instagram or your website or I think a website yeah, of course, encapsulates my, everything. Yeah, my website, of course. Uh, yeah, it's a very simple website. It's www.varijashree.com and my Instagram is varijashree. So I keep putting out some of my crazy PJs? exercises. PJs? PJs, I should, you know what? You actually, you have put in a new seat. <laughs> yeah, okay. Let's, you should. Let's think <laughs> yeah, we should do this. Like literally, like, you know, like a uh, brainstorm or like you... put up like a couple of them and next time you're here we'll we'll again talk about you know how, about, what your journey has been uh, like as a pj as a creator yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh god yeah. like you said you're a full time pj creator yeah 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 no that just flows like yeah yeah that's natural <laughs> doesn't need effort <laughs> oh man yeah. no this is been great bari thank you so much same here akash thank you for having me over and and i i should also thank sonu for connecting us yeah, so, yeah definitely so, shout so, out to you sonu yeah. <laughs> sonu is one one exceptional person she's a person, bun- bundle of energy she, she yeah. really is dude <laughs> so my wife was uh, talking to her a while ago and she was um, complimenting on how she's a mother and she's putting out content regularly frequently yeah, she's like you yeah, know yeah, like yeah. talking to brand she's doing everything yeah yeah literally without breaking a sweat i think and so it's amazing yeah, yeah. so yeah sonu kick ass yo <laughs> cuz you're doing it you're actually kicking ass but uh, great bari thank you so much and come wait to have thank you here you. again once Ab- i pass the mind so absolutely <laughs> definitely thank you thank you all <laughs>
<laughs> it's just crazy how composed this woman is, right? Man, she's one of the most unique guests we have had on this uh, show to date, and I learned a ton talking to her. If you found value in the episode and you learned a ton as well, then consider doing a couple of things to support the show maybe. Yeah, if you're watching this episode on YouTube and you haven't hit the like button, then now would be a good time to hit that like button. Smash that like button. And by that I mean just head on down right here. I'm not sure which side, but just hit that like button right there. And if you haven't subscribed, uh then yeah, consider subscribing because we have a whole lot in store for you. If you're listening to this over audio then leave a rating and review on apple podcast it's a very simple way to get the word out there it helps out with the podcast audio pla- uh, uh podcast audio algorithm yeah it helps out the algorithm helps to get wo- helps get the word out there and it helps out with the discoverability bit as well so yeah leave a rating and review it just takes about 10 to 15 seconds but it goes a long long way and yeah if you like long form content and you like reading then might i recommend subscribing to my newsletter my newsletter is a biweekly newsletter where i talk about the important things in life a little personal a little intimate where it kind of complements the kind of content i'm creating here so if you'd like to read some of this then subscribe to my newsletter on my website on akashdamodan.com and uh, yeah it's it's free it's completely free it'll always be free so go check it out and uh, once you do get the first edition of the newsletter that comes your way let me know what you think by replying to that cool then i guess that's pretty much it i'll see you guys next one until then ciao